Hello and welcome to my small video entry for the CocoVid 2020 which is basically an idea that came from Noel from Costuming Drama I will link her channel somewhere on the screen and since Costume College and many many events has, have been cancelled in 2020 we decided to make videos to kind of still be able to teach something costume related to the people just online and safe for a pandemic. <laughs> so I wouldn't have planned to go to costume college since I'm from Europe as many of you know I think but still I had the idea of making a video, an educational video about fabrics and different kind of fabrics for a long time actually since I started the channel because I really like shopping for fabrics and in general fabrics, I love them. So I thought I might want to talk, make a whole video about them. So this seemed for me like the appropriate time for that. And yeah, so a little disclaimer first. I try to keep this video relatively short, but the whole subject about fabrics is a huge, huge topic. So I couldn't possibly cover it in one video since back in fashion school, I learned about fabrics for two whole years one to two hours each week and I still don't know everything, far from everything actually, just a small amount. I will not dive into every subject very deeply, sadly, but I will try to give everybody an overview and tell you the most important things you need to know when you are a costumer or a beginner sewist, because I think that it is not that easy gaining knowledge about fabrics when you haven't been to a school where that is taught or had a course where that it was taught. So I think it's very hard to find the information you need about different kinds of fabrics. Let's stop with the talking and disclaimers and get started. So firstly, another thing I have to say, please keep in mind during this video which was um, problematic for me at the beginning that a fabric consists of two parts. First the fiber and then the weaving. Both things make out a fabric so you always have to think this is the fiber and this is the weaving. So there are some types of fabric which are just referred to with the weaving like tulle for example or velvet which is just a type of weave and you don't talk about the fiber. And then there are some other fabrics, like if you say I need a cotton fabric, most people know more or less what you need, but you just refer to the fiber and there are many, many kinds of cotton fabrics. With that in mind, I'll give you a little introduction about what this video is about and I will link some timestamps so you can go directly, directly to what you're interested in. And I think that makes the whole thing a little bit easier since I think this will be a rather long video. So first I'm going to talk about different fibers and give you an overview where they come from and how they're made and give you a little bit of an environmental statement to them. Then I will talk about different kinds of weavings. And then I will show you some more examples of fabrics and how to identify them if you have an unknown fabric, which includes fiber. <laughs> so be careful when you do this at home. Let's start with the first point, the fibers. So nowadays there are two main fibers, which are first the synthetic ones and the natural ones. I will talk in this whole video more about natural ones because for historical costume they are far more important than synthetic ones. Nowadays synthetic ones are very often used because they are far cheaper to produce, but natural still have more features and are most often better to wear than synthetic ones so I will focus on them a little bit more. Imagine this like a family tree, a reverse family tree so you have natural fibers on top and then there are plant-based fibers and animal-based fibers or protein-based fibers. I will start with the plant-based fibers. There are, first, there are two main ones actually. There is cotton and there is linen. So cotton is definitely the most frequent used fiber while linen is not as commonly used anymore. And I think nowadays everybody has made at least something out of cotton. 
So cotton comes from a plant, the cotton plant. I think everybody knows how they look. They're like this little fluffy, white fluffy um, plants. And they usually grow in very warm regions in the world. And there are many monocultures with cotton and they can be very easily mass produced, which they take advantage of, <laughs> let's say that. Um, the only problem is that cotton uses a lot of water and also needs a lot of pesticides, especially when they grow in monocultures. So from an environmental point of view, cotton is not the best, but there is a rise in organic cotton and it grows more and more. So there is um, a lot of organic cotton and I think the trend goes to organic cotton being the new standard. It is usually indicated on the fabric or the fabric seller will tell you. Um, so the other fiber is linen, which is nowadays a rather expensive fabric to compare it to cotton, which is a very cheap fiber. Linen is nowadays really expensive because you can't mass manufacture fibers from linen as, as well as cotton. So linen is made from a plant called flax, the flax plant. And it usually grows in a little bit colder climate than cotton. And you can't uh, mass manufacture it as easily as cotton. Because what you do is you bundle this flax up on the fields and basically let the harder part of it rot in the sun and in the rain and everything. And then you can break it and the fives in the middle are then heckled, which is called. Like you comb it through basically to get rid of to get rid of all the dirt and everything and make it finer. So you can at some point make a yarn out of it to weave a fabric. This is very simplified now, but yeah. So linen is a very old fabric. It has been, it is far older than cotton, at least in uh, the Western, Western culture, which I'm focusing on since this is my uh, focus point in historical costuming. Yeah, so linen is nowadays um, rather expensive and also the quality of linen isn't as good as it used to be actually. It's usually known for a very rough, wrinkly fabric, while in former times it was usually a very, very light and soft fabric and nowadays the soft linen fabrics really go or start by 20 euros for a meter. So yeah, yet let's leave the plant-based fibers and go over to the protein-based ones, which is firstly wool and then silk. Those are the two ones that exist at the moment. Um, so silk is also a very old fabric, um, originated in China, and there are the silk worms uh, or the silk moth. And this animal, just like any butterfly or moth does, spins a cocoon when there are, and this cocoon gets then spun down again. The, nowadays the worms get killed by steam before they turn to butterflies or before they turn to moths, and the cocoon is then rolled, rolled spun down again. So this uh, animal usually lives on the mulberry tree, where the name comes from mulberry silk. There are also some other moths which you can use for silk, but I don't know the name of them in English. Um, here in German it's called Wildseide or wild silk basically, and it's another type of moth that makes a more rougher silk, but still a pretty quality. But the mulberry silk is the one that is used for anything flowy, silky, for shamus or the chess or something like that. So let's leave the silk and go over to wool, which is the second big protein based fiber. So wool is also a very um, old material which is used far thousand years back. The typical wool comes from the sheep, as you know, but there's also wool from different animals, like there is wool from camels or from alpacas. There is also angora wool, which comes from a bunny. 
Then there is uh, cashmere, which is a goat, and merino wool too. So there are many different kinds of wools, and usually the sheep wool is the roughest wool you can have. Uh, it's new wool, like a new wool scarf or a new wool sweater. It's usually very rough and a little bit itchy on the skin. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm not a big fan of it, I have to admit. So the process is, I think everybody knows it, uh, sheep grows their wool and then it gets sheared. And that's it basically. So a uh, big pro producer of uh, sheep wool it still is the UK. A lot of wool comes from there and I honestly don't know about other wool uh, producers. I think the, I know there is a little bit of Austria one, but I'm not sure about other countries. I bet there are many uh, wool producers all over the world, but those are the main spots I know about. <laughs> wool is, again, a rather expensive fabric nowadays, especially fine wool. Rough wool is okay-ish, but very fine wool that is also used for it is also used for tailoring suits and everything can be very very costly and it all depends on how the animals are treated as you can guess uh, very cheap fabrics the animals are usually treated very poorly and with uh, high quality fabrics they usually get treated a little bit better but just the price alone, alone doesn't say anything but I have to admit it's very hard to find out where exactly the wool comes from. So you can't really make sure that there is no animal cruelty involved in this. But usually sheep and other animals have better and more beautiful hair if they are treated well in their lives. Um, although the cashmere is a very big problem point for me as those animals are often treated very very poorly. So I personally stay away from cashmere and just use regular wool. I don't know enough about wool production to know that there is no animal cruelty involved but I will certainly look that up. Silk again on the other hand is, is so expensive because the production of it is very very time consuming. As you can imagine, the cocoons are pretty small. Even with all the machinery, it's still a time-consuming process. Yeah, I think I should go over to the synthetic fabrics. This is a whole other point. And let's start with the reverse tree as well. So there is the synthetic fabrics, and then there are two undergroups, which is first plant-based synthetic fiber. Let's describe it as that. Which is a little bit of a mixture. You can't really pinpoint it to uh, natural fabrics and not really just synthetic. I will explain the production of it in a minute. And then there are the true synthetic fibers, which are just plastic, basically. First, the plant-based synthetic fibers. So, those kind of fabrics are based on cellulose, which uh, is for different fabrics differently from different plants. And the most well-known fiber from that part, from that category, is rayon. Uh, so rayon is uh, made from usually or most often made from peach trees and there's actually a big company that makes and produces rayon here in Austria and they invented a lot of techniques on making those cellulose based fibers. There are other cellulose based fibers which is for example acetate which is just as well as rayon, often used for lining blazers or jackets. And then there is also cupro, which is a synthetic silk that's made with copper. So I have to tell you a little bit of, about the procedure of making the, those kind of fabrics. They usually take trees and shred them to very small pieces and press them, soak them and press them again, so that they're like those plates of firm cellulose. This gets then re-soaked and made into, I don't know the process behind it, it's complicated and not not everything is open to public either um, because it still has a patent going and yeah and then it somehow is transformed into a mass that is able to be spun into yarn. Um, while making this into yarn it goes through a chemical buff 
and there are different kind of chemicals that make this fluid mass into something firm that you can actually spin and weave into fabric. And for cupro in this chemical uh, buff is copper. And cupro is a very interesting and often very nice uh, fabric with a very nice touch. But the problem is that it is forbidden in uh, many countries as cupro is very toxic for the environment. Uh, which is not the case with rayon and I think it's not that much of a problem with acetate. But cupro has this big problem so it's a very rare, rare fabric. But I accidentally bought one recently and I will show you something very cool about it. So the nice thing about those kind of fibers is that they still have some features, especially rayon has the same features as cotton has. It's breathable and it's very nice to wear. All of those different fibers are called synthetic silk because you can make them look very silk-like. Even high quality acetate can look very much like silk, while the ones you usually get are very cheap and not that nice and a very cheap acetate doesn't have the breathability of rayon for example. So you have to still look at the price a little bit. So rayon is usually more expensive than acetate and cupro is in different price ranges. Let's jump over to the true synthetic fabrics. Out of them the most well known fiber is definitely polyester, which is used for most of our garments nowadays, which is not good as it's basically plastic. If you imagine wearing plastic, it has the same problems. It doesn't breathe well, it gets very hot. Although there are different kinds of fibers and there is very thin polyester, which breathes a little bit better, but only through the holes and the weaving, with, but not the fiber itself. And it doesn't take moisture very well. So there are many problems. I'm personally, I'm not a big fan of polyester, but it is cheap and especially for historical costumes where you need tons and tons of fabric. Polyester and other things like that, polyamide for example, they can look very much like uh, silk, so many costumers still use them when they don't plan on wearing the costumes on a day-to-day -day basis, because you will get hotter in them, you will get warmer in them, but you can also save lots of money. <laughs> so you have to think about the down and the uh, upside. And the problem with polyester is throwing it away. It doesn't rot. Like cotton does rot at some point, polyester doesn't, it's plastic. And there are other kinds of those true synthetics, which is polyester, polyacryl, or polyacrylic in English, I don't know, which is used for everything that's wool-like, like a thick sweater and something like that. And there is nylon, which is polyamide. And then we also have Lycra, which has some spandex in it. It gives it this elasticity that is needed. Uh, Lycra is just a brand, brand name, but what's in it is spandex, which is a very high stretch material that is used for swimwear and spanks and something like that. Everything that needs a lot of stretch. So this is very briefly the true synthetic fibers, because I actually don't know enough about how they are made and especially I don't know all of the differences and I don't think it's that much of an interest to exactly know which uh, chemical fiber this is. So yeah, that's the overview. Not as quick as I thought, but I expect this video to get longer anyway. So let's uh, go over into different kinds of weavings. So let's jump into the weavings, which is a little bit simple because there aren't as many types. There are just two main types, which is first woven fabric and knitted fabric. So woven fabrics are uh, usually, I, th I mean everything or most of it is canvas uh, weaving, which is just like if you ever made something on a loom, if you ever woven, have woven your own fabric, or even if you made, just made a pie with this lettuce crust on top, you know the principle of a canvas woven fabric. There are two yarns of fabric that are intertwined and it gives you this canvas bind which is very typical for most fabrics and the, the oldest and in the beginning of clothing making the first uh, weaving that has existed. And then there are different variations of that. 
For example, twill. Twill, you, you notice how twill looks because it has those diagonal uh, lines going on on the fabric. And what it makes is that it is a stronger fabric which does shift a little bit more. But it is a very firm fabric which has not as many holes or... But canvas also ha always has those... It, it's not as tightly woven as twills for example. And satin uh, weaving is also on the tighter side. And the canvas is usually on the more looser side. There can be very, very loose canvas. There are many variations of canvas weaving. And a typical twill fabric is, for example, denim. So you, you know it's a very firm fabric. Then there is satin. Satin is uh, made by having one yarn, skipping some of the yarns. So you see more of one yarn than from the other, which uh, the yarn is shiny, makes the whole fabric appear more shiny. And there's also shakar, which is an invention that came in around the 1830s, if I remember correctly. And it was a completely new invention. It's a new type of machine and you can enter which threads are skipped and which not. So you can make very intricate, very detailed patterns were woven directly into the fabric. So with that you make shakar, something like brocade. And they usually have a different yarn, two different yarns, and the pattern is reversed on the other side. So to explain woven fibers a little bit, there is always a weft and a chain. So again, example a loom. I think most people have seen how a loom works. There are... Okay, now we have some catch feet. So the chains are the firm threads going up and down and they usually stay in the, in the same place when fabric is woven. And then there's the weft which goes from left to right and gets intertwined with the fabric. So this is the same principle for all the different kinds of woven fabrics. And this makes a fabric have a salvage. So if you have sewn something already you probably have heard of weft and chain and cutting things on the crane. So on the crane means just that there is that the fabric lays directly on one chain thread actually. So the chain this is always the firmer direction of the fabric while the weft usually has a little bit, just a tiny bit of stretch to it. Even if simple cotton canvas fabric has more stretch in the weft than it has in the chain. So you usually cut a dress for example uh, lengthwise so that the chain grows goes vertically down and the weft goes horizontally. And then there are the knitted fabrics. The knitted fabrics, as the name suggests, are knitted. Knitting really had their room in the 20th century and especially to the later decade many knitted things have come because knitting became easy to mass manufacture. So nowadays most garments that are worn are knitted actually, most garments that are produced. Because knitting, knitted fabrics have the big advantage that they have a stretch to them. They're usually, without adding any synthetic fiber that give elasticity, the fabric just removing itself has a lot of stretch to it. But nowadays a little bit more stretch is commonly used for most garments. So there is some sort of spandex or, elas or other elastic fibers in it. So most commonly knitted fabrics are referred to as jersey jersey fabrics. So this is the other big part to the woven fabrics. But knitted fabrics are just mostly used in the 20th century. Before that they were usually hand knitted like you would knit nowadays but more finely. In the mass production I will look it up and I will put a rough date somewhere on the screen when mass produced knitted fabrics have become available to the broad mass of people. And now I will show you the different kinds of fabrics I have at home and how to identify a fiber and how to identify the weaving. The best way to detect a fiber is by burning it, basically. So you take some piece of fabric and then you burn it and the smell will tell you what kind of fabric that is. So I will start with cotton as this is the thing I started with before. And first I have a pretty basic cotton fabric. 
which is usually referred to when I say, oh, I need a normal, a regular cotton. So it, usually it's something like this. It's canvas woven. I don't know if you can see it from here, but you will pretty clearly see that there is something going up and something going this way. And then the pattern is printed onto it as well. There are some fabrics where the pattern is directly woven into the weaving, but most cottons are just printed. And I will show you how you find out that this is a cotton. First of all, a pretty easy indicator is you can rip it. You see this edge here is ripped. If you cut into the fabric and just try to rip it, cotton will rip exactly on the grain, like exactly on a weft or a chain thread it will rip. So that is a giveaway for some linens and especially cotton. And then you have the fiber here and you will see that it burns very quickly with a flame and you have to blow it out pretty quickly otherwise you burn yourself so you see it burned down very quickly and if you like rub it between your two fingers there is nothing left so everything is gone it's just like you would burn paper and also you might know that if you burn paper there is nothing left of it you can just rub it between your fingers and the ash will just fall apart and the same goes with and then we have it's very simple denim actually most denims are have a twill weave but i managed to pick the only cotton i can find which doesn't this has a canvas weave usually denim has like this typical diagonal pattern which you probably already know and it gives it the strength and in this example there is some spandex or some other elastic material in it to make it elastic because cotton alone wouldn't be elastic but it certainly is then we have a cotton sateen which is as i said woven to skip some threads and then go under and then go up again so you see a lot of the yarn and it makes gives it this beautiful shiny look and cotton sateen always looks very very elegant to me at least and it's usually rather cheap as well and a good alternative to silk sometimes even as it's is um, a little bit shiny and you can and your body can breathe in it and so i think it's a pretty good fabric actually for historical costumes so here is some brocade uh, it has a shiny yarn and matte yarn on the other side it, it's made with this chakra machine and there is a pattern on this machine and it will tell it exactly where the shiny side needs to go down and up to make this pattern. Brocades or Chacan usually exists in silk, cotton and some synthetic fibers as well. Then I have another Chacra which is a lot softer. This one is more used for furniture and this one is a real Chacra to use for clothing. On one side those parts are shiny and on the other side there is more shiny. So next up we have linens and I just have two types of linen here because there aren't many many types and those are just the two ones I had to sit around and there aren't really types of linen. Most linen I have seen are canvas woven. I have never seen a twill or satin woven linen actually and so there aren't many types i've never seen a linen shakar either and also not a linen jersey i think that's not possible <laughs> so linen is usually can canvas woven and it comes in different thicknesses and in well it comes in different weights and it comes in different levels of rough or fineness so this is a rather rough linen you see it has some uh, bits that are irregular and you can see the light comes through through it but it still has a lot of body it's rather thick and linen is a little bit complicated to differ from cotton as there is cotton linen actually cotton that is made to be looking like linen but usually the only giveaway 
that it is linen and not cotton is just the look of it. So you see this both fabrics look different than the cotton ones did. And usually as I said there are just canvas weave so you only have to have a problem with something that is um, canvas woven. So this is a finer linen here. So this is the rough one and this is the fine one. You see it um, doesn't let as much light through. Here's just one layer. So it's much more tightly woven. And the other giveaway that is linen and not cotton is because it shifts around a little bit. Like when you just hold two layers it shifts around a lot in your fingers. And it has this certain sheen to it, like a this tightly woven. It has a sheen to it, a natural one that cotton doesn't. So that's the only giveaway to know it's linen. So basically experience and you see it like it bounces a little bit. It's just a little bit different to cotton. So linen is a little bit harder to sew while cotton is probably the most easiest fabric to sew. And for burning test it goes the same as for cotton. It burns very very fast so I have to be careful. You see? It burned very fast and again if I smell it, it smells like paper and there is nothing left of it once you take the ash away. Also you can't rip rip linen. If that's a giveaway for linen too, you, you can't rip most linens. But if you just make a cut and try to rip it, it doesn't work, it, it you won't come far. So that's a giveaway for linen as well. Uh, some linens you can rip but most you can't. So next up silks. So I have different kinds of silks here again and most of them do have a canvas weave. So I have a very thin silk wall here and it's a shiny type of silk. It's mulberry silk again and yeah it does have a canvas uh, weaving and it's very thin. It's a very thin silk thread. So silks do have different names although they are just different weights and different qualities of thread basically but there aren't too many weavings there is canvas weaving satin weaving and there's shakar so that's the types of silk so this is a simple very thin threaded um, canvas weave here's the classical dubioni silk which has the rougher silk in between so it's a less quality silk therefore it's uh, cheaper but it usually has a lot of body to it as it's a rough uh, thread and that one is the same to be on your silk but it's dyed so it changes colors depending on how the light hits it which makes it also very high quality fabric so they all have different kind of names which are just memorizing or just if you if you need silk best ways to just touch it or memorize the names and feel the touch to it so this is this uh, wild silk I told you about from the other kind of uh, moth that makes silk. So you see those threads are really very thick and there are a lot of knots in it. So it's a really low quality of silk. But it does look quite good too. Especially in modern clothing you can make a blaze out of it and it looks great. It really gives the garment something special. And it's cheaper than other silks and it has the same properties. And then we have uh, one of the classics, one of the most expensive classics, uh, silk chamuse or the chess, I'm not quite sure. And this has a satin weaving, a satin twill weaving if I see correctly. The weavings you just have to look very very closely. If you see diagonal it's twill, if it's very shiny uh, satin and yeah, you just have to look with the weavings you can't really detect it otherwise so it's matte on one side and shiny on this side and those shiny silks are usually the most expensive kinds of the chess and chemise and they are the most expensive and they are the most expensive types of silk nowadays and this is just very gently dyed mulberry silk from china so, and I'll show you how the silk burns. So silk burns not as fast. It's actually, it actually doesn't burn too well. It almost burns bubbly. You see, it doesn't burn at all. It just always burns a little bit away. You can see that. And if you smell it, it smells horribly. I have to say, it smells horribly. It smells like burnt hair. 
So if you burn your hair, it smells like this. And again, when you take the ash, you can just rub it between your fingers and it goes away. There is nothing hard in it or anything, it just goes away. So that's silk and it smells horribly. Uh, same goes with wool with the burning test. Wool does smell like burnt hair as well, obviously. So this is a canvas woven wool. And just a simple, regular, very soft wool that is suited for suits and everything like that. It's moderately itchy, so usually suits are lined and you don't wear this directly on the skin. This is also a very high quality wool, which is good for blazers and suits on many uh, higher quality fabrics. On the selvage, they say where it's made and what it is. So this is all wool made in England. So on high quality fabrics, this usually stands on the selvage. So canvas bound, very nice lightweight wool, usually very expensive. Here, this is all sheep wool. This is sheep wool again. And this is a wool, wool felt. It is a little bit different. Wool felt is not woven. It's a very finely, like when you make, I think maybe in kindergarten or something, you made something out of felt and you just took some loose wool and rubbed it with soap until it become, became firm. And the same goes with felt, uh, wool felt fabrics. This is just something that's rubbed so long till it gets a very fine fabric and then pressed and everything. So this is al always a very warm fabric. Usually they're a little bit thicker and very, very firm from the grip. Not as flowy as this, but very firm and also a little bit itchy. And here is alpaca wool which I bought from an uh, alpaca farm here in Austria. This wool is extremely soft. You sadly can't feel it, but it's extremely soft. It doesn't, isn't itchy as all, at all. And just soft and beautiful and warm and cozy. So alpaca wool is one of the greatest wools, but very expensive. And now to the burning test. It burns almost like silk. Very hard to burn. Do you see it? never goes that far, it burns a little bit and then... And it also, like silk, smells terribly like burnt hair. It has a very unpleasant smell, just as silk. So, from burning alone, you can't differ silk from wool. Just when you smell it, it smells exactly the same. So wool and silk, you can just differ very easily by looking at it. Is it rough and a little bit itchy? Wool. Is it a fine Shiny fabric, silk. That's it, basically. Now onto the rayon pile. So I have some rayon here, which I just recently used for my 1930s nightgown. And this is a rayon with something, with some spandex or something in it. So this is a woven rayon, and you can see it's very soft. Rayon is usually very, very flowy and very soft, so this is no exception. Then we have a rayon twill here. Also very beautiful, very soft fabric. Very prominent of this fabric, there are the horizontal lines. You see it on the inside better. There are horizontal lines going like this, and you can see it's a twill. And I will burn this for you to see. Hope you can see that. It burns fast again. As you see, rayon burns as fast as cotton and it actually smells like cotton. So you wouldn't know if it's rayon or not from just the smell and the burn test. But what is special about rayon is that it doesn't like water that much. So if you chest it's a little bit disgusting. Put wet your fingers with your tongue and put it, it on the uh, on the middle and just twist it a little bit. You see fiber there, it gets immediately thin. And if you pull in the middle of the wet part, it just rips there. So the downside to rayon is it doesn't hold its shape that well in water. Cotton, cotton does, it doesn't matter, but it is easier to rip in water, which is not ideal for a fabric that is washed very often. But other than that, it has the same properties as cotton and I actually really like using rayon, although it doesn't hold the shape that well in water. Then we have a lining fabric. This one is made out of rayon and this one is made out of acetate. Um, there are acetate fabrics with the same sheen, but if I feel this fabric, this feels colder, colder and acetate feels a little bit warmer. It feels more plastic and is a little bit rayon fabric. It 
is like paper, like cotton. Acetate on the other side, although it's also a on and it also is plant based, it doesn't burn like a plant. And if you burn it, you see, it doesn't burn. In fact, there is like a little. You see, I had a lot of strands like that, and it melts on the other side. So you have a very hard ball on the other side, it's just melted together. And here I have something interesting, also from the 1930s dress. It's a jersey, but it's Coupro. And I got my hands on it on accident because I would never buy Coupro, as I know it is very bad for the environment. But I just on accident got my hand on this. I didn't know what it was actually. And then I burned it, because the flame of Coupro is very, very interesting. How I found out that this is Coupro is I burned it, and you will see it burns fast, for example. First of all, it burns fast, so I have to be careful again. Do you already saw? It's green. And that's a dead sign for Coupro. If the flame is green and it smells like a burnt paper again, it's Coupro. What I like about this fabric, it's really flowy and it really looks like silk. Coupro is the fabric that comes closest to silk. So the last part are the synthetic ones. So the art has to find out which kind of synthetic fabric, but I honestly don't know it. So I will just say from touch that all those things I have here are polyester. But I will show you the different kind of fabrics and how they're combined with weavings. So this is actually canvas, very shiny thread and it's a tough taffeta which just uh, indicates the kind of sheen it has. It has not the same sheen as a real sateen would have and it's taffeta and that's sateen. There is a difference in the sheen. Just know that it's, this is soft and this is more coarse as well. It has a soft sheen too, this has a harder sheen. Then we have a ganza which is a fabric often used for ball gowns and stuff like that. Very sheer, very translucent. A uh, canvas weave, very very loose canvas weave with a shiny thread. And here we have tool, which is similar to lace. Like, it's not really woven, it's not knitted either. It's basically not earlier in the times lace would be handmade. There was bobbin lace, there was crochet lace, needle lace, tattered lace like many many different kinds of lace and tool I guess was made the same way but nowadays most of it is machine produced but it really they really are very expensive types of lace that really look great although they are machine produced and then we have velvet which I haven't talked about at all okay this one is a bad example but most velvets are made especially the cotton velvets are made by having two layers of canvas and then they cut with a knife through in the middle and then the hairs stand up. You basically use five um, threads for five or six threads for velvet. You have two layers of uh, canvas and something that goes in between that makes the hairs and then it's cut open and then you have the uh, velvet in between. So it's just basically tiny hair standing up. I don't know how to do it with knitted velvet, but I guess it's similar that they have two, that they have two um, knitted fabrics and then there goes another one in between and then it's cut open again. So you have two sides, both velvety. And there is cotton velvet, which is very expensive. Most velvets are polyester or polyamide or polyacryl or something. And I will show you real quick, I forgot how synthetic fabric Burns. You will see it melts rather than it burns. It burns a little bit. So you saw it burned a little bit, and what's left is like this a uh, hard, you, you, can, you can't, it's just a hard ball of plastic basically, and you can't do anything with it. You can rip the fabric, but you can't rub it between your fingers, it just stays there. So if you get any questions, ask me down below. And I try to do my best to answer them. And that was the fabric one of one. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, maybe subscribe to my channel and maybe leave a comment if you enjoyed the video or if you have a question, obviously. And leave a like. And I hope I see you next time. Bye!